If you go inside, they will show you many, many symbols. They won't tell you what they are. For example, here are all the hats and regalia that are worn by the various officers in the Masonic Lodge. And the very highest one is the one on the top there. So I'll only go into the details with the highest one. We don't have to go into them all. They're all Catholic symbols anyway. It doesn't really make much difference. You'll find these symbols on all the Catholic orders. You'll find it in the, in the Vatican. You'll find it all over the place. It's run by Catholicism. It is Catholicism in another garb. And here it is in large view. This is the hat of the Sovereign Grand Commander, Southern Jurisdiction, donated by whoever. All right. On top, you have this symbol over here, all these strange crosses. That is the symbol of Baphomet. Now, who was Baphomet? Why would the grand, the sovereign grand commander of all Freemasonry here in this country have Baphomet's uh, symbol? There you have the sovereign grand commander, Henry C. Clausen, wearing the symbol of Baphomet. This is the symbol. It was also worn by Alistair Crowley the most vile individual that you can imagine. What? Forget about him. This is Baphomet in its male and female form. That's why you had the female with the finger on the mouth, which stood for Horus or Hippocrates or Isis. It makes no difference. And here you have Baphomet on the centerpiece of the main Masonic temple room at the headquarters of the Mother Supreme Council of, of the World in Washington, D.C. The symbol of Basif. Now listen to these names. This is the temple room of the headquarters of the Mother Supreme Council of the World in Washington, D.C. Who says she's the mother of all the churches? Rome. And Freemasonry is the occult arm. The one that calls a spade a spade. They don't tell you, but they give you all the symbols. And if you study the symbols, you will be led to Lucifer. And if you come higher and higher and higher, eventually, unperceptibly, you change until you are chained. And in the highest level, you worship him directly, luciferically, occult. Here we have the symbol as it was used by Alistair Crowley of Baphomet as well. And this is the Lemic Order of the Golden Dawn. That's the New Age, when Lucifer will be enthroned. We've already dealt with the New Age movement, and the law is do what thou wilt, not what God wants you to do. God is not in the equation. When you go into this fantastically large lodge that you have down there, which is now a museum where you can actually go into it yourselves, uh, you will find against the windows all the symbols of Catholicism. I showed you these symbols of the sun god. And then blatantly in the middle, you have this one, which I have enlarged for you over there. It is the sacred heart. Where do you find that symbol? In Roman Catholicism, with the flame of Lucifer and the letters IHS, Isis, Horus, Seb, as you had it in the Jesuit order. So what is Freemasonry? Other than the Jesuit controlled Luciferian worship. And you heard their oaths. You know what they're about. And you know what they will do to get any country whatsoever to be subservient to the Pope. Does that include the United States of America? Yes, it certainly does. Well, I was flabbergasted. I was so excited to find all this interesting stuff. Here you have this deity climbing the steps. That's a Masonic symbol of working your way to heaven. And uh, he's one of the scribes. Now he's a symbol of the deity. Now they told us that this one is very special and that this art is something that is totally lost. This is an original. When it gets night, he turns black. You see that? Totally black. Now, who was worshipped as white and as black? Osiris. Osiris. Now, Masons meet at night. The Bible calls them children of darkness. And at night, they worship in the occult system, the dark side. So you can be a Satanist and you can, like Alistair Crowley, you can be a Satanist and an 
and a dark side occultist and be prominent and well respected in masonry or you can be on the light side and climb onto a pulpit and preach you can do that like many prominent masons you look up the prominent preachers I had them on the screen Norman Vincent Peale 33 degree Freemason now what does that mean It means that he worships the devil that's what it means I'll prove it to you. I don't say things without proving them. I mean, I could go heaven knows where for that, right? Let's have a look. In this temple, you have the Egyptian room. You have the Egyptian deities. There's Anubis. Now, if they have nothing to do with these deities, if they are a good Christian organization, why do they have all the symbols? Why do they have the serpent with the eagle's wings, symbol of Lucifer? There he is in your local one here at Tulsa. There you have the scarab beetle with the wings and you have the, the frog deities and there you have the same symbol that you have on the front. The Syrian room where you have the winged cherub symbol of Lucifer and all the symbols of sun worship. The bowing down to the solar rays, all the, the pentagrams and the pentagons, all of them come from ancient worship. And this man over here, who's that? That's Albert Pike. Now he was the general of the the southern region, there you have his, his uh, all-seeing eye. Uh, my friend counted these over here and he said there are 33 of them and there are 13 over there, 33 degree Freemason and one of the great occultists of modern time and the father of Scottish Rite Freemasonry here. He and Manzini divided it up he was the one that was responsible for the theosophical side, in other words, the occult secret religion, and Massini was responsible for the political side, gaining control of the whole world for Roman Catholicism. That's what it is. Gaining control for the dragon who gives his power and his seat and great authority to Rome. Let's have a look what this man teaches. By the way, Masonry says that this man never said this, that, and the other, and that he was a wonderful person, and that some even deny, oh, he wasn't even really high up or had nothing even to do with Freemasonry when they get into a corner. Well, I walked into this lodge, it is a museum, there he is, poof, when you walk in, and his quotes are all over the place. No point denying it anymore. Here's one of the first ones. Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma. To study and seek to interpret correctly the symbols of the universe is the work of the sage, the philosopher, it is to decipher the writing of God. Now that's not the way the Bible says you should do it. In fact, that's the way the Bible condemns that you should do it. So who is his God? Well, do they associate themselves with him? Yes, they do. Here you have another, uh, one of those stained windows. It says Albert Pike Lodge, number 162. No need denying that. Here's another quote. Here they have their, their scepter and their quote over there, I've enlarged it for you, you can see what it means, it says in the Scottish Rite the crown and the scepter symbolize a man's dominion over himself, his desires, his appetites and passions and not over his fellow human beings, Albert Pike. So it symbolizes man's dominion over himself. Albert Pike, another one of these interesting costumes that they wear. You can see the solar deities. These are for all the various grades of Freemasonry. He says the history of man's thought is the only history worth much study. Not God, the history of man's thought. Here is uh, the library in one of your local ones. There is the history of Freemasonry and you have the pentagram with the rays emanating from it the history of Freemasonry over there. They used to have a magazine which was called the New Age. That's what it was. But when the New Ages were confronted by Christians who saw that it was Luciferian, they quickly changed their name to Scottish Rite. One and the same. The New Age is derived from the Scottish Rite. Masonry controls the New Age movement. Masonry controls Wiccan witchcraft. Masonry controls Hollywood. There is not an organization in your country that's worth anything that's not controlled by them. 
Let's have a look at some of their other interesting quotes as you walk through and read what masonry is about. Men resemble the gods in nothing so much as in doing good to their fellow creatures. So we resemble the god. Pike says, knowledge is the most real and genuine of all human treasures. Paul calls it gnosis. That's what it is. The word knowledge there is gnosis is the greatest treasure. That's what it says. Paul says it's gnosis falsely so called. Let's put it beyond doubt. I have difficulty reading this. As it, is in him, as it is in himself alone that man can find true and enduring happiness. So in himself alone can he find true and efficient consolation in misfortune. So where does the power lie? Do you get it from God or do you have it? You have it. That is man exalting himself over God. That is demonic. Here is their order of demole, with all the catastrophic solar symbols right over there. Demole, this wicked man, with these wicked rituals of Satanism and sacrifice and sodomy and spitting and trampling on the cross, is a hero in Freemasonry. It's very interesting. And their crosses have the rose on it, symbol of Lucifer. There's another cross with a rose on it, symbol of Lucifer. All their symbolism, this is the Tao, the mystic Tao, symbol of Lucifer. And there you have the lion with eagle's wings, symbol of Babylon. Mystic towels as well. In this window, this is a huge window, and I've enlarged this one for you because it's very interesting. You have the double-headed eagle, but here they don't even hide what they're trying to tell you because they have the white and the black. The two aspects of Osiris, the dark side, the light side. Isn't that interesting? Their god is Lucifer, the horn of fortune, which you will find is the symbol of many interesting organizations, including the symbol of the political party in South Africa that introduced apartheid. Isn't that interesting? All right, over here, you have this symbol, this Eastern mystic symbol, this is the Islamic symbol, this is the Islamic sword, this is the Islamic arm, because Islam and Catholicism behind the occult scenes are one organization. One organization. That is why you don't hear one complaint from Rome about what Islamic countries do with Christianity that preaches the Bible. And then of course that symbol which we've already discussed. Let's answer, ask Masonry some questions. Is Freemasonry a Christian organization? Now we'll quote from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. I showed you that in their big library the other day, not just now. If Freemasonry were simply a Christian institution, the Jew, the Muslim, the Brahman, the Buddhist could not conscientiously partake of its illumination. So, it's everything. Is Freemasonry Christian? Freemasonry is not Christian, nor a substitute for it. Masonic friend. Well, the man told us the same yesterday. The true Mason is not creed bound. He realizes with the divine illumination of the Lodge, notice the language, that as a Mason, his religion must be universal. Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, the man means but little, for he recognizes only the light and not the bearer. He worships at every shrine, bows before every altar, whether in the temple, mosque, cathedral, realizing with his true understanding the oneness of all spiritual truth. That's Manly Pan Mahal. 33 degree Freemason, the last keys of Freemasonry, page 65. Well, folks, who are we worshiping here? Is it Jesus Christ or is it the other one? It's the other one. It's demonic. Whether they like it or whether they don't like it, it's demonic. Did you know that your whole state is controlled by them? It's run by them? The King James Version of the Bible is on the altars of the Masonic Lodges. Isn't that proof that Masonry is based upon the Bible? That's what they tell the first three degrees of Freemasonry and right up to the 17th. 
Masonry has nothing to do with the Bible. It is not founded upon the Bible, for if it were, it would not be Masonry. It would be something else, the digest of Masonic law. 